hello and welcome everyone. This is Blackadder at Blackadder's Place and I'm here with another round one matchup from the Fall of the Titans tournament, this time between Seattle MC and Qui-Gon. Seattle MC is also known as Scuddy for some, so if you know that name, that's him. And Qui-Gon, that is Nemesis, a former Norse expert who has been playing quite a lot lately. And well, let's see how this matchup is going to go. Seattle MC is known mainly for his uh, team game proficiency with BRT lately and TBL before that, but he is pretty good in the 1v1s, especially in the past months. So let's see how the map on the Ghost Lake is going to play out for him. So let's start and the first to have a look at is right now Seattle MC. So right now it seems like that the map has spawned with some quite nice hunt with the Aurochs on the left. So it's already going for it right from the start, which is expected. And well, how look at how he's Isis. He's probably going to go for some faster heroic or whatnot. So let's see how that is going to go for him. And going for a scouting with the initial priest. And since we don't really see anything all that extra here, pretty good wood line, so nothing he can complain about. He can switch into another player, Qui-Gon. Norse expert who is playing Thor in this map. He's also gathering <laughs> from the Orox here and he was using quite nicely the Ox card here to actually absorb the damage from the attacking animal and he is placing it quite nicely. That was very nice lure actually so that he has to use just one Ox card and doesn't have to use some, uh, an extra one which could save him some extra resources and possibly allow for some earlier advance. Let's see if that's going to work out for him. Pretty nice scouting with the goatees here, even though he could <laughs> scout a bit more a bit more spread out formation, but it doesn't really matter at this point. And he is uh, yeah. scouting with the Ulfsark on the left side, trying to see what is on the other side of the map, that he knows where he has to fall back if he needs to. The first relic is to down center population slots, which is, which is pretty great, especially considering that he's playing against Isis that has this bonus innately and the user simply how she is designed and it could actually level up the experience for him quite nicely. Yeah. Right now the Ulsark is going for a bit more offensive here, so trying to secure the hunt of the opponent right now seeing quite nice placement and since we don't see really anything much else here, Skip. second Ulsark for better scouting going on the right side trying to discover some extra hunt because to be honest he hasn't discovered all that much, just the one at the back and he probably wants something at the forefront. Uh, in case he's under attack, he wants to have the safe back hunt to have nothing to fall back on. So let's switch off the Fog of War to have a comprehensive look on the map. It seems like that the gold positions are pretty much okay. This is, yeah, this is kind of not ideal because it's hidden behind the tree line for him. So it will be very hard to defend if it is being raided. The villies would have to go all the way around. So yeah, it might seem nice, but actually it's not. And as it goes for Seattle here, that's much better because it's protected from this side altogether, from this side by the TC, and it's literally as safe gold as it can be. So very nice for him, and this one, yeah, it's pretty much on opposition. And as for the TCs, I don't really see any problem whatsoever for either team. This one is kind of useless, it's right at the back, but similarly is this one, yeah. which is right now being discovered by Qui-Gon, so I don't really see a problem with that. There is also a second relic in the middle, that's cheaper temporary research costs, that could help probably more to the Thor, even though I don't really think that's going to be something that would be missed all that terribly by anyone, and well, that's a bit of an idol here, and at pretty bad time, to be honest, at 3 minutes, he should probably be thinking about advancing, and right now he doesn't need this, not gathering that's from 7 minutes, and it's going to slow, how, slow down his advance, I'm afraid. Seattle is doing a pretty good job of actually scouting, so it almost seems like he's going for some aggression, which is pretty curious for an Isis, to be honest. And well, with this Obelisk, he will have a look line of sight and pretty much next to the TC. Let's switch into him, and yeah, that's literally as close to the TC as it can be without actually seeing it. <laughs> well, right, another Obelisk there, okay. Well, that's... Right now I'm pretty curious what this is going to develop into <laughs> because this is really rather unusual. And right now finally the Ulsark is going home and is putting the stop to this nonsense because this really was super curious. So yeah, please has to retreat and he will be quite lucky if he actually survives this encounter with the Ulsark. Well, let's see how about some advances here. qui -Gong is not building any extra villager which signals that he wants to go into another age. Uh, and well... 
after halfway through Anubis already for the Isis. Well, that's almost like some class classical fight for 30 advance. He was going to be faster in the classical age uh, than Thor with the Freya. <laughs> and this is really curious. Double priest already. And Pharaoh. So it almost really seems like that he's going for some aggro build, which is really curious at this point. As Qui-Gon is going for aggression himself, but <laughs> right on the left side of opponent's base. Having <laughs> Hersir already. And trying to wall in so that he's protected. And more than that, that he actually prevents those Willis from retreating in some safe way. And... That he doesn't give up his early position on the left side of the map. Well, the Radiant is right now going on first from Seattle, who has already advanced into the next stage. Freya is advancing right now, or rather, Nemesis. And he is trying to take down the wall here, or rather, the tower Seattle. And yeah, that's probably not going to happen just through <laughs> double siege and a pharaoh, but it's still pretty nice. And yeah, still con continuing with the obelisks here, so that he has proper line of sight. At the same time, of course, Qui-Gon is forcing Seattle off the hunt here on the left, which was kind of expected. So that's not going to happen for him. Uh, but he does have another extra safe food sources, be it the goats here. The extra berries or some extra goats here. And also, well, something else. Not really, not really. Just this hunt, but it's really opponents. So that's pretty much it. But I think he has enough goats here to actually survive. And since he's going for barracks here, can be pretty sure that he is going for a classical fight. So it would be quite interesting encounter between the, between those two players. And quite unusual play to be honest, because from Isis you would usually expect some faster heroic. Anyway, that's not happening. And the Raiden from Seattle is still going on, right now killing a Willy here. Which is a pretty good job, and he is actually being forced to go for a dwarf mine, dwarven mine that is right next to the DC, because he doesn't have any heresies here, even though right one is being built, but the Anu uh, Anubite is doing a pretty good job. You don't really see him all that often in games lately, but... Oh wow, this is good. This is very good, the Plague of Serpents, because he's going to disrupt uh, the food, rather the gold gathering here, sorry. And together with the extra units here and the Anubite, it could be just enough to actually deal substantial damage to the Echo of Qui-Gon at this point. If you look at the minimap, you don't really see all that many red dots in blue space, so he's not being heavily attacked. And well, even with the support fire from the DCs, the economy is pretty hammered here, and Qui-Gon is being slowed super well. <laughs> this is seriously curious gameplay by Seattle, and it seems to be seriously paying off, because at this point, yeah, we saw another Oxcar down, somebody is down as well, and well, Seattle is... Preventing his opponent from gathering all together and forcing him to be at some quite low amount of ADs. At the same time, it seems like Seattle is not really being hampered in his own base, even though he's slightly running out of food. Just one last goat here, but still having at least some of those berries here. And if he knows about those at the back, EVG probably could. Let's switch into his point of view. Yeah, he knows about them, so he knows where to fall back on extra hunt or extra food. Well, right now, finally, Kobaigon trying to make sure that he is not being easily raided, <laughs> trying to get rid of all the obelisks here. The Anubite is also half health, so he is still very much alive, and he will probably take care of this ox card because he is not really being punished by anything here. But right now, he will be, and at least he's putting it at half health, and if he can actually attack it with his extra attack. He still could dish out some extra damage that would be quite detrimental to the Messi's attempts at whatever he's doing. Into you, into you. Some extra army from the barracks from Seattle is already cropping up. And he is also trying to secure the tower so that he isn't raided whatsoever by his opponent, which is a pretty good play. And well, 1300 gold is still quite a decent number. And you can see the auto cues here on slingers with axemen and here spearmen with slingers. So that's a pretty good composition, and wow, that's a huge army. That's a pretty huge army at this point, and you can see that Qui-Gon doesn't have anything like that. He has literally nothing in his home base. One Hersir, one Valkyrie trying to get rid of the extra line of sight, and inside the base here of Seattle, almost, and there's absolutely nothing. And switching into him, you can see that he has an auto queue on accelerating cavalry, so he does have some army, but that's not really enough against this kind. Because uh, Seattle is already prepared with 
all he needs, especially the spearman against the raiding cavalry. So I kind of think the all he needs is really just one of the batch here from uh, the barracks actually staying at home and that's going to be it. Well, armor is being built, so it seems like Seattle is in a pretty good position to think about advancing, which might be the case, even though the food is really low and he has to be careful because right now he is running out of food as he is gathering from berries on the left and on the right as well. And yeah, this pharaoh is going to be enough to actually defend against this pesky Valkyrie. And she's almost dead anyway, so just one hit point, no problem whatsoever. So if she doesn't get an extra friend, yeah, she's not going to be healed anyway. Right now the <laughs> development of the map uh, quite decidedly forced the Messis actually into a pretty heavy defensive and he is and being <laughs> killed quite substantially because this is a pretty good army you. and as you can see Qui-Gon doesn't have anything substantial to actually fight with against that and even though he is trying to raid yeah, Great. it's absolutely Great. nice Great. army Great. from Seattle to defend all these willies and yep even though it's just one spearman and a yeah. whole bit of priests together with slingers that's just enough to rip all this raiden and still the Anubite is not dead, that's still the first one that was generated freely from the temple and doing a pretty good job trying to actually keep Seattle of this uh, Qui-Gon of his gold because he has already finished the Thor gold mine and he needs to go somewhere else. Right now he is still opting for this safe one which is not really safe all that much as he would have hoped for. And uh, this forward base is pretty much dead at this point, just a few units Indeed. left to get rid of it and I don't really think that Qui-Gon is making any army of it whatsoever. Yeah, he's probably just right now uh, trying to make sure that he doesn't waste any resources and he will be switching into his home base and he is also quite substantially trying to defend it by some extra walls which is pretty much the only thing that he can do at this time. He's also in a pretty much a dangerous situa situation because even though he is right now uh, trying to secure his base, he doesn't have any longhouse here. He's just a temple and another Valkyrie is being built so it can probably result in this Valkyrie being saved because she could be healed probably. But still the army from his opponent is pretty strong and it's really at this point uh, about waiting for the heroic age from Seattle and once he reaches it that's just going to be another push with ancestors yeah that's probably going to be pretty much it for qui -Gon. so he has to think about what to do right now because his houses are now being killed which means that these guys are going to switch into the wall pretty soon and also discover the temple in just a matter of moments and Seattle is right now not really going into heroic but he is going for just sheer strength of his classical army at this point and going for a second TC which he will succeed in and since this is the front it means that the back one will be all that easier to capture for him. Qui-Gon was actually thinking that he could raid some of the economy from his opponent but that's not really going to happen because since the TC is done Oh yeah, this is a pretty nice play. He's actually trying to make sure that these guys cannot get there. And he is a bit too slow, but it was really a very decent play at this point. And it bought him some extra time to actually bring the army from the bottom at the top and, well, defend against that. Right now the forest fire is a pretty clever play as well, as it means that this army had to somehow backtrack and it also received some extra damage. And, well, it seems like that this Anubite is finally going to die with just one health left. <laughs> And well, Qui-Gon has to retreat because he doesn't have enough army to actually fight against and all these infantrymen. And well, it did slow Seattle down a bit, so pretty good play from Qui-Gon considering the circumstances at this point. Mm. And he is making use <laughs> of the situation quite nicely, even though he wasn't probably paying enough attention at actually mm. cutting off those fillies and he could have probably killed them all. But right now that's not happening and Qui-Gon is right now paying attention to something else. Well, this though bought some extra time to Seattle to expand to the left side, so he's right now getting gold from two pretty much safe spaces, even though this is right now pretty open and he is returning at the scene. But at this point I don't think he's really going to do all that much, he's just going to kill a few villies, but he's going to lose a uh, whole of his army and he doesn't have all that many extras. So yeah, this is pretty much goodbye. Red's army, he did kill at least some villies. So that's something, but uh, overall I don't really think it was all that worth it. Because yeah, as you can see in his base, he's right now probably aiming for heroic himself. 500 food for Seattle, so he is nearing the ancestors here pretty much. A whole lot better than Qui-Gon, and Qui-Gon has army just 
quite measly here. One throwing Axeman, plus Sarks, two Harsers and two Valkyries. So that's not really enough, especially when it's right now being killed even just <laughs> by a few units here by Seattle. And once he joins with all his classical army, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, Qui-Gon right now is recognizing that the situation is pretty dire and he can't really fight in the classical here. So he is going for extra TCs and hoping to get some advantage through some Echo Boom. Which is probably not going to happen because both those TCs are very low health at this point and they weren't built to some huge amount of hit points. And well, Qui-Gon right now will be in a pretty terrible position because the Pharaoh and the priests are gonna take care of the Valkyries without any problem whatsoever. And this kind of army, yeah, it's just the death of the attempt for this TC. The back one though is still very much in contention because even though it's still being built by just one throwing axeman, it can go up because it's defended by the towers and the TC, even though once we saw that the ox card all actually went through this way, it seemed like that there is actually a way through. He better be careful about all he does here. Seattle right now is expanding and <laughs> stealing the TC because he really knows that he is having a strong upper hand and it's not like Wygon can actually do anything about it even though this sneaky build is pretty clever because it's out of sight for Seattle and could allow for some secret build up of an army so pretty good job at that and another radiant attempt at the opponent here Valkyries have been upgraded into shield maidens so they have a bit more uh, better stats than their opponents, but yeah, you can see that Seattle is already through Neftis, and we don't really see Kwaigo getting anywhere close to Bar Bragi or anything else. Yeah, probably Bragi <laughs> at this point. And this means that Seattle, once he casts his ancestors together with the army, he will be a pretty strong force to be reckoned with for his opponent, who doesn't really have enough. And even though he is finishing second TC right now, so pretty good job at that, he is having his main economy at this TC, and once the ancestors are there, and the army from his opponents is there as well, right now going for a Migdol at a pretty strategic position. And I really like that because it isn't covering any gold whatsoever, but it is very close to opponent's base and will afford some extra protection for his units to fall back to. So that's a very clever play at Seattle's side at this point. Qui-Gon is being penetrated at this point and yeah, yeah, I'm fire of the DC, so better be a bit careful. But still, Qui-Gon is using the buildings as he can also to defend himself so that he denies his opponent from coming into the base. At this point it's pretty much waiting if Qui-Gon can get into the heroic before the huge assault comes, because it's just a question of time for Seattle to actually have enough army to assault his opponent. Right now he is at three TCs. Quite safely, the fourth one is yeah, not going to be any problem whatsoever. And this is an interesting attempt at now at raiding from Qui-Gon because it doesn't seem like that Seattle has any way to retreat from here. He does have the wall here, but if uh, Qui-Gon actually microed a bit better, he could have positioned these units. Yeah, preventing this escape, but right now, yeah, unfortunate for him because he won't be able to get there. So pretty nice use of the wall here. If you look at the mirror map, you just see a whole lot of blue literally everywhere and red is just at the top which is really insignificant at this point and at the bottom there's a lot of red but yeah the army is not really big and it's waiting just for the inevitable to happen and Seattle is going for Elise which is pretty much the correct choice because that's exactly the unit that he needs. He needs some tanks to actually protect against the tower and TC fire to go forward so yep. The main attack is preparing a second Migdol right inside the base here and ancestors are here and this is the final push that's going probably to decide the game here and let's see if Qui-Gon can do something about it. Right now pretty good amount of resources for Seattle to actually own anything on the battlefield. He's having a pretty much an easy way to the pop here. And the Elise are right now actually the ones that he wants to use for siege, not really any siege towers at this point. And Maybe just now? No, nothing. Just going for extra elites and they are more than enough because right now they are forcing Qui-Gon to actually fight with his Willis and try to take them down, which is, yeah, quite a folly task because elites have quite a huge amount of hit points, 500, and it's not like <laughs> villagers are actually good against them. I'm supposed to the siege weapons against which they really are good. 
So this is a main TC for Pygon down and it seems like that this is really an inevitable end to this endeavor and this game and very surprising play from Seattle who wasn't going for the standard Isis play and went for a very very aggressive classical fight build and it seems like that it's paying off <laughs> quite substantially. Right now he is at pop having a pretty decent amount of eddies here and even though Qui-Gon has been able to advance into Scarif and is able to cast very nice frost. It's not like that's going to stop anything. <laughs> Seattle also going for <laughs> the TC right off the bat because he had enough advantage here. And Indeed. yeah, literally, Wagon doesn't have anything here. And it's not like he can stop anything from happening. He was probably thinking that he might be going for faster mythic. But yeah, looking at this, looking at this position, that's probably not really a viable strategy for him, especially when he doesn't have any resources whatsoever. Well, that was a pretty interesting game, and you can see that Seattle was expanding everywhere. And even though Qui-Gon was trying another unlucky build at the end, yeah, that's not really something that could have disrupted the gameplay here for Seattle. Well, that was a pretty decent play right there. Very nice game indeed. Let's check some upgrades. Yeah, not much. Would expect something from Echo. Yeah, pretty good economy upgrades for Seattle and for Qui-Gon. Um, just the baseline, pretty much. And in the military department, nothing. Yeah, he was pretty much stomped at the beginning, but he was trying uh, sneak play at the top, but he was completely taken aback by the aggressive approach by Seattle. And that's something he wasn't actually able to recuperate from for the whole duration of the game, even though he did some very nice raiding in there. So let's check some of the post game here, where Seattle is probably going to win everything, yeah, just as expected. And he did have very great echo compared to his opponent. And really, this was about the surprise effect of the classical fight for the Isis here. And 430 advance from Isis, that's it's like a screen, screenshot worthy <laughs> because you really don't see that quite that often. And the one Anubite, how much damage did he deal? And how long did he stay survive? Really, that was quite some time. Can you maybe see him still alive somewhere? I don't really expect it. But you never know. I think he was still involved in the large fight at the bottom here and the last moments. So yeah. yeah, he stayed alive for like literally almost the whole game. That's a pretty good play from him and a very nice off spin. <laughs> And yeah, you can see here from this advancing to classical, it was just huge boom for Seattle, and he just was limiting Nemesis, aka Qui Gon, to just not be as good as he was. Well, GG. So let's see how the second game will develop in the next video.